To watch the latest from India Science, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon to get notifications on all the science related videos. With little or no infrastructure, rural India struggled to get COVID-19 tests. So, non-profit organization ArtPAR teamed up with the government to develop an AI-based solution that can help India if a third wave strikes. It could help rural regions lacking CT scans and RT-PCR facilities. The solution X-Ray Setu could help doctors with access to X-ray machines. It can help diagnose COVID-19 from low-resolution chest X-ray images sent over WhatsApp. X-ray Setu reads chest X-rays and predicts if a patient has any lung damage that indicates COVID-19. And with this encouraging piece of information, we begin our program today. I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time. We bring to you the best that science offers from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. Let's begin with story number one. And China reports the first case of H10N3 bird flu in human. The COVID-19 pandemic has put the spotlight on zoonotic infections, meaning when viruses jump from animals to humans. And recently, experts reported the first human case of H10N3, a virus that infects birds. H10N3 is a subtype of the influenza A virus. The other three types are influenza B, C and D. A 41-year-old male from China's Jiangsu province became the first human to have contracted the H10N3. He was diagnosed on May 28, 2021, shortly after being hospitalized. The patient is stable now, Beijing's National Health Commission said. There is no information on how the man contracted the infection. And the World Health Organization told Reuters that it had not found any evidence indicating human-to-human -human transmission. H10N3 infects many different animals, including ducks, chickens, pigs, whales, horses and seals. And according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, H10N3 is a rare infection in poultry and does not appear to cause severe disease. And moving on to story number two, the switch to vegan milk. Is that for you? Non-dairy plant-based products are becoming increasingly popular these days. Some plant-based milk products are almond, oat, soya, coconut, rice and quinoa. While some avoid dairy due to lactose intolerance or a cow milk protein allergy, Others choose non-dairy milk products for ethical reasons. Recently, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals or PETA suggested that Amul should switch to plant-based dairy. Amul countered that by questioning how plant-based milk could employ crores of people. Switching to non-dairy alternatives can potentially affect millions of people. Over 65% of the country's population either partially or wholly relies on agriculture for their livelihood. Animal husbandry for dairy is a significant contributor to the total agricultural product. Close to 200 million farmers in India have dairy as their primary or main supplementary source of income. Livelihood is one aspect of the debate. We need to consider nutrition and the environment as well. Many brands of plant-based milk drinks contain added vitamins and minerals, but not all of them are absorbed by the body. Also, some brands have a higher content of sugar and salt than cow's milk. Thus, plant-based beverages are not an exact substitute for mammal's milk. Let's look at the debate from an environmental standpoint. The dairy industry adds around three times more greenhouse gas emission than plant-based milk, according to a 2018 study. However, plant-based alternatives are far from perfect. 
One study pointed out that almond milk is bad for planet's health. It consumes more water than any other dairy alternative. We need a more sustainable solution, one that factors in the economy, environment and human health. Let's think about it. We take you along to our next story. Well, space is a hostile place for organisms including humans. Astronauts experience microgravity which causes people and objects to float. Scientists don't have a complete understanding of how microgravity affects the body. So, NASA sent a bunch of water bears or tardigrades and baby bobtail squid to the ISS to fill the gap in knowledge. Why did they choose these passengers? The bobtail squid glows in the dark, helping it escape predators in the sea. So, how does that do that? Well, this is thanks to the symbiotic relationship that the squid shares with bacteria colonizing its body. Bacteria provide bobtail squid with a predator escaping light in exchange for sugar and amino acids. As you know, all animals including humans rely on gut microbes to maintain a healthy digestive and immune system. Researchers believe that the squids could help shed some light on how space flight impacts a squid's relationship with these microbes. This could tell us how microgravity might affect the friendly microbes in the human gut. The experiment contains two fluid processing cassettes that will house an experimental and control group. One cassette will contain a group of baby squid inoculated with a filtered seawater containing a symbiotic microbe called Vibrio fisheri. The other cassette will host squids along with filtered seawater lacking the microbes. Once the experiment has run its course, the squids will be euthanized and the samples will return to the earth for further analysis. So, accompanying the squids are tardigrades or the water bears. These organisms, which are less than a tenth of an inch long, are famous for being almost indestructible. They can survive blasts of radiation, intense pressure and even the cold, airless vacuum of space. Researchers are keen to understand how tardigrades survive and reproduce in extreme environments and whether humans can learn their tricks. So, how will this help? Well, if tardigrades produce a lot of antioxidants to survive, humans could supplement their diet with foods rich in antioxidants. These experiments could help astronauts stay healthy and survive longer outside the Earth's protective atmosphere. It's incredible what we can learn from these organisms. And with this, this is a wrap on this edition of Science Time. Keep watching India Science every Friday evening at 9 p.m. for more updates on Science Time. Namaskar.